Dr. Gori, what ethical issues does prenatal testing um, raise? So when I first started doing fetal medicine in, in the city of Abu Dhabi, uh, over seven years ago, that was exactly the question I got asked. Why do fetal medicine? And why screen a fetus when there's nothing we can do about it? Um, yes, we live in, in a country where the, uh, the laws are quite strict in terms of continuation or not of continuation of the pregnancy. Um, however, it's not all about uh, that. Uh, there's other aspects of care and management of the fetus with, uh, that may be affected with, uh, with an abnormality. Um, there's also the emotional support uh, and the social support of a, of a mother to be who may be carrying a baby with an abnormality. So it's, it's not all about you know the whole abortion controversy or anything of that sort. It's about managing the pregnancy effectively. Based on that, and that's that's one of the ethical issues I think. Um, another ethical issue is the whole concept of screening in fetal medicine. So we screen a fetus um, and we give you a result, but it's not a diagnosis. So we tell you you may be at high risk or low risk. All screening tests have got false positives and false negative results. So we might tell you that your baby is at high risk of having a condition like Down syndrome, uh, however it's a false negative, so in, in effect your baby is absolutely fine, but we put you through that anxiety of, of knowing that there might be a potential problem with the baby. The only way we know is to do a diagnostic test at present, so, uh, so you know there, there are a few ethical issues that do come up with the uh, basal testing. And um, what risks do invasive prenatal tests pose? Okay, so invasive diagnosis remains the, the only way we diagnose uh, a baby with chromosomal abnormality. Uh, and that's by way of a CBS or a chorionic villus sampling early on or an amniocentesis a little bit later on. Um, there is a risk, uh, and the risk is essentially of a miscarriage. So there is about 1 in 150 chance that as a result of the Procedure, uh, the pregnancy may miscarry. So that is a, that is a, an important issue to highlight, and the, and the aim that we have is to improve our screening process as much as possible, so that we don't have to go down the line of uh, an invasive diagnostic. Okay. Um, when it comes to technology and non-invasive prenatal testing, where does where does the UAE stand when compared um, to the rest of the Middle East or even the West? I think, I mean, the, the whole cell for DNA non invasive prenatal testing is a, is a new, uh, you know, new introduction into the field of uh, screening and fetal medicine. I think it is going to be and have a huge impact in uh, the UAE uh, and in the Middle East. And the reason is purely because of the, of the whole issues, the cultural issues, and the legal issues that come with the country. So we do not allow uh, termination of pregnancy unless they're very, very specific um, uh, cases. Women do not like to take a risk of miscarriage, um, particularly because they don't feel that it justifies um, you know, having an invasive test just for the knowledge of knowing. Um, and this is where NIPT will come in or self DNA will come in because we don't put the pregnancy at risk at all. We do a blood, uh, a blood test to the woman uh, and, and up to 99% accuracy we can actually tell you that uh, whether your baby's got an abnormality um, or not. So huge potential. Um, this country has a lot of um, uh, consanguinity so inter-family marriages, uh, high risks of genetic disorders, um, advancing maternal age, women mm -hmm. are getting older, uh, higher prevalence of Down syndrome actually uh, within the region. So, so I think NIPT will, will take off quite well. Do uh, we already have these uh, non-invasive tests? Or is yeah, it? no, we do. We do. We are, are there are actually quite a few companies that are, uh, that are available doing the um, they all predominantly are done in America, um, 
with all the common the different arms and, and uh, names of testing. But it is available here uh, already, and we do we do do them for certain high risk cases. Now, with the cost issue, um, it's not something that's covered by insurance, so we we choose and pick who we would offer uh, non invasive prenatal testing to at the moment. But I think with time. What syndromes can be screened by non uh, using non-invasive prenatal testing? Okay, so the commonest chromosomal abnormality or amyloidy that we see is Down syndrome, which is a trisomy 21. So we're looking at the actual chromosome numbers for the extra 21 in the Down syndrome. So Down syndrome is the commonest. There's also two other common chromosomal abnormalities mm -hmm. for trisomy 18, which is Edwards syndrome, uh, and trisomy 13, which is Patel syndrome. Uh, there's also another X or chromosome, uh, which is Turner syndrome. So these are the these four are the main chromosomal uh, endoploidies that we see with uh, non-invasive um, prenatal testing. The newer uh, Newer addition to the whole cell free DNA testing is um, microdeletion. So, a few rare conditions um, that these uh, tests are now able to pick up, um, such as Prada Willi syndrome, um, uh, De George syndrome, which is uh, reasonably commoner than, than not, um, uh, Angel Man. So, a few of the, the rarer ones that are coming, but the main ones are the, the endoploidies. Um, how do you think prenatal testing will develop uh, in the future, especially for this region? So if you think about it, we are looking at fetal DNA uh, through a blood test from the mother. So where is the, the end of, of assessing the fetal DNA? So currently we're looking at the common chromosomal abnormalities, but I believe, I, I, I am sure, that in the future we'll be actually mapping out the DNA of Oh, there's no reason why we can't do a full fetal genome scan um, on a DNA that's taken from the maternal blood. I don't know, I don't know. Um, but there is a lot of potential because we have got the DNA of the fetus through, through this test. And uh, cost will be an issue, of course, um, but I think as technology gets better and more available, that, uh, that price will go down and be a bit more available.